Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and uh, so excited for this next episode. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about helping others, doing things better, and having self dominion in everything you do. But let's get a little more deeply. I've got an expert here whose background fascinating counterintelligence, army veteran, remote viewing, and more. And he's parlayed all his incredible background into becoming this business phenom. So he's going to be teaching us things, pulling back the curtain to things we might not know otherwise. And this podcast, Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger is your number one transformation conversation. I have been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award and recently was listed in Welp Magazine Dare to Dream as one of the best 20 podcasts you must listen to this year. That was very meaningful. Sent to me by somebody else. Did you know? I said, no, I didn't. But I receive, I receive. Beautiful. And the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do amazing energy work out into the world, highly recommended. If you'd like to check out their courses anywhere in the world to become a facilitator, to get worked on, to just go to their workshops, do so. It is Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. I myself, Debbie Dashinger, I teach business owners, coaches, entrepreneurs, and speakers the time-effective action steps to write a highly engaging book. I also turn every author's book into a guaranteed international bestseller, and I run the ultimate visibility formula, and I show you how to book podcast guest interview spots and how to get massive results when you do it. If you would like information on these, you can start being really visible out in the world. I give away a tip sheet. I give away some videos to guide you through the process. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. D-E-B-B-I, D is in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. Get yours today. My guest today is Justin Reckla. He is and was an Army veteran and former counterintelligence agent who successfully transitioned counterintelligence techniques into the business world. Justin is the co-founder of the Superpower Network, a spiritual channel and master chameleon. These unique superpowers enable Justin to guide his clients in methods of effective communication and data assimilation so they can find and achieve success in both life and business. If you'd like to learn more about him and his network, go to Super powerexperts.com. And with that, I welcome Justin to the Dare to Dream show. It's great to have you. Thanks so much for having me, Debbie. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to connect with you and uh, connect with the audience. Long time of coming. <laughs> yeah, it's been. It's, we've, we've, been uh, we've been circling each other for some time and it's, uh, I don't think you and I have ever, we, we've brushed by each other in, in passing because you, you've always connected with Tonya and Neva. So I appreciate the opportunity to connect with you now. Yeah, now now I've got a full family experience. That's it. <laughs> so I want to start with this fascination, over 13 years experience and advanced training as a counterintelligence special agent, army soldier. And it's so wild to consider who you are today. Was that always buried inside doing this government work, the, the who you be or the, the person I sense and know? Or was it something that came when you transitioned out of government work? Uh, you know, the, the the counterintelligence stuff was something that my old what I what I define as my old self that led me to that path. You know, I mean, the path is the path, and I, I looking where I sit now because I've I've now been out of the field longer than I was 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 in it. Is I, I look at what got me to the counterintelligence realm and the work that we did there in that space. And I realized it was really for one purpose. And that was to meet my wife, Tonya, because together we were training counterintelligence agents. And between the two of us, so the time that we served and worked together, we put over 4,000 new agents into the field, teaching them things like uh, counter espionage, spy techniques, you know, all the, all the spy world stuff that you see in movies. Uh, we were, we were training people to do that. And, and along the way, 
the government came to Tonya because of her experience in education. She had a master's degree in critical theory, uh, crit uh, critical thought, and she got brought into a project to rewrite some material that the government recognized that the old ways of our the way we were fighting wars was no longer effective. We we had to start thinking differently. We had to start thinking more proactively because the enemy that we were fighting just had changed. And so Tony and I were brought in because we were dating at the time and she was writing it because it was a top secret class. We were the only two people that could teach it and we were the only two people that could talk about it together. And so we, um, between the two of us, we wrote about a third, maybe half of the course uh, together and we taught agents in theories and concepts from in-group, out-group dynamics, ego deconstruction, uh, and all of what, you know, the personal development journey, the hero's journey mm -hmm. to these new agents, because as an agent, if you go into the field carrying your ego with you, you're going to die. Not only are you going to die, but the the person that you're running, your source, right, that's got, that's got the information you need, you're going to most likely get them killed as well. And so really what we were doing is we were teaching personal development concepts to agents and helping them deconstruct who they were in their mind, get over their fears, integrate any other prejudice, you know, prejudice or judgments that they had so they can be effective in the field because we were fighting an enemy that had started to outwit our technology and we needed humans to be effective in the field in order to gather that intelligence. And Along the way, we realized what we were teaching to these agents was much bigger than us. And as spirit often does, sometimes it taps people on the shoulder and other times it whacks you up the side of the head with a two by four. Um, we got displaced from a fire. We were gone for two weeks. And next thing you know, we were thrust into the business world. And we started our own corporate counterintelligence vetting firm, doing due diligence due diligence and background checks and empowering business owners in some of the methodologies that we used as agents to help them protect themselves and their businesses. And that eventually evolved into the personal development world and what has now become the number one podcast network for inspired personal development with over 4.4 million downloads a, a, a month and where we are just putting out messages in high vibe frequency helping people reconnect to the divine and tap into their innate superpowers so they can go out there and have an impact on the world. And, you know, from, from there to here, it's been a very long and a very wonderful journey. Mm. Wow. That is fascinating. Uh, this, the switches and turns, the switchbacks of one's life and where you can end up and that you are a heck yes through all of that and coming out with those extraordinary skills that you're able to parlay right now to people who really need it. This is probably more entrepreneurs on the planet right now than ever before in history who really need guidance. I just wanna harken back to what you shared at the end, the superpower network that you and Tonya run and congrats on the success there. That's Thank beautiful. You. So what can people find if they go there? What makes it stand out above other, let's say, spiritual channels that people can tune into? Well, that's a great question. The, the, the biggest thing is that all of the shows that are on our network are all high vibe. They're not rant. They're not talking about celebrity. They're not talking about this. They're talking about things from a high vibe frequency. And so, for instance, my show is Incorporating Superpowers and it's on the network and you can find it also, uh, you know, across Apple and all the podcast directories as well. And I speak to people that are doing business differently. People that can recognize that the old constructs of business no longer work. And we need to do things in more awareness, higher consciousness, and re recognizing that the old methodologies aren't going to work for us moving forward. And so I highlight business owners that are doing things better. Who are, who are creating win-win-win solutions in their business and not just in it to make a buck, but really to make an impact in the world. And so our network is designed to attune people to those conversations. we got a three-step process. We tell people, listen to one podcast episode a day just to keep your frequency up, uh, especially Tonya. Um, her shows, uh, either Disrupt Reality or The Science of Superpowers, 
Tonya is uh, just an amazing empath, probably the most powerful empath I've ever come across. Uh, she is just, um, her name itself, Tone Ya, Tone as in music, Ya as in Yahweh. It's literally like the voice of God because she, there's just something that happens when people listen to her and, and, and the information that she's able to bring forward and deliver in, in ways that just attunes people to a different version of reality where most people identify and see as truth in the bigger picture because it's a lot of other shows and whatnot that, you know, are, are talking about this. Well, she's talking about this and our network is designed to support that container. I have a question about that. I'm really fascinated that you just described Tonya as an empath. I know she's highly gifted. I've experienced her gifts because Tonya isn't an emotional person. And just in my estimation, most people who are empaths are high and high sensitives are highly, also highly emotional, uh, have big highs, big lows, big you know, feelings uh, through all their sensitivity, but she is an anomaly. I don't, and she's even said the same to me about yeah. herself. So this is nothing, you know, fascinating. Absolutely. That, well, that part of that part of that comes from in, in her body of work, the information that she's brought forth in, in the concept of superpowers, empathy being one of them, um, and, and, and what she's created is, uh, is a process called uh, the superpower design. And it's an evolution of human design. And it looks at empathy from a different perspective because most, most empaths that are highly emotional themselves aren't necessarily empathic. They just get their intuition through emotional energy. So for instance, that's how I get my intuition. I get my intuition through emotional energy. A lot of time, I'm a very emotional person. I'll cry on a dime. I'll watch a movie. And, oh, like there's a tear. Well, where's it coming from? What's well, not mine? I'm feeling, I'm picking up on the emotion coming in from the energy that's being expressed through whatever it is that I'm witnessing. It's also, I'm the same way if I go into a room and if I get swamped with emotion and I'm starting to feel sad, I, I have to try, I've trained myself to go, okay, where is this coming from? Because it's not mine. To whereas Tonya, like you said, she's fairly void of emotion. She has no need for it. But as an empath, she is able to tap into other people's emotions because she's void of emotion herself. And so she knows where that's coming from. And so the body of work that she's created and brought forward kind of redefines what an empath is mm. and breaks it down a little bit farther to help people get a better understanding from where that empathetic energy is coming from so oh my gosh okay that was so cool and i'm going to bounce around a little bit and then this is all going to get woven together because there are your past which is fascinating and i'm, I'm going to be going also into the business part for folks who are listening and watching so i assume counterintelligence you never saw combat or did you well, I, my, my, my background was a little bit different because I did uh, my five years at Fort Lewis training with 114 Cav and was set to deploy and never deployed because I ended up coming down on surgery. However, when I got out in 2005, I went over as a civilian contractor and served as a counterintelligence agent for a year over in Iraq. Um, so the job that I would have been doing as an agent in the military, I was now essentially doing in Iraq as a civilian. Um, I did 12 months in Iraq. And then in 2012, uh, as the business was uh, forming itself, um, I went to Afghanistan for six months. And I did six months in the Helmand province working with fifth group and special forces over in Afghanistan doing the, the counterintelligence work there as well. And the difference between counterintelligence and intelligence is what? So there's in, in counterintelligence there. In, the intelligence industry is made up of all sorts of different uh, modalities. You have SIGINT, which is signals intelligence, right? You've got HUMINT, which is human intelligence. Uh, there's all sorts of different branches. Counterintelligence is a field of human intelligence that is designed to counter the enemy's intelligence gathering means. Right. So as a counterintelligence agent, if we can identify what the enemy is 
trying to gather on us, then we can control the narrative. We can determine what information gets put out, what information doesn't get put out. And part of it, part of the purpose of counterintel is to identify those that are spying on us, what their intelligence gathering techniques are, and then inform the battlefield for how to navigate and circumvent the enemy's intelligence gathering needs. Mm. I understand this gets shifted into something called Stargate Project or Project Stargate. I know this was a secret US Army unit. I know it was established in 1978, and I think it was disbanded in the 1990s. And it was essentially put together to investigate the potential for psychic phenomenon in military and domestic intelligence applications. So they primarily used remote viewing, if I understand what Stargate was all about. And for folks who don't know what that is, will you describe what remote viewing and the validity of some of what I'm sharing? Yeah, absolutely. So Project Stargate, there's there's some information out there. There's not a ton of information out there on it, but you can find it. Project Stargate started off as a classified project. To my understanding, from the early, early 70s, late 60s is when it got started. It didn't get declassified until the late 70s and um, it was the government's way of wanting to understand psychic phenomena and trying to identify how they could utilize psychics remote viewers to be able to locate enemy vehicles enemy actions and things that were going on in the battlefield in the height of the cold war um, i was blessed to be able to work with one of the very first uh, remote viewers on Project Stargate, William Ray, um, and he he shared a lot of his experiences with me. He shared a lot of uh, the techniques with me. I was able to I remote viewed uh, uh, sometimes myself with with friends um, and actually seen different locations, been to different locations through remote Wait, what viewing. What do you mean by that? You you remote viewed yourself. With friends? No, no, I, I, re, I remote viewed things that I was wanting to look at. I was able to visit locations and places through through the remote viewing technique uh, using what, what Will Ray, well, William Ray had taught me. Um, but what he was doing in, uh, in the field when he was part of Project Stargate is he was pinpointing Russian subs off the coast of Florida during the height of the Cold War and the military was getting actionable intelligence from the remote viewers that was proving valid um and you know like it's it's since been you know disbanded it's been been well to the best of my knowledge it's been disbanded it's probably it's probably evolved and they probably got some other project that they're, that they're utilizing and working with now uh but yeah it's um it's 100 valid the government's used it uh i worked with like i said i worked with some of the uh, the first first uh, remote viewers and it's a uh, a really fascinating science and experience. And it's actually, um, to my understanding, the movie, The Matrix, the concept of The Matrix originated with Project Stargate. It was a vernacular that they determined to help identify the energetic field that surrounds the earth. They referred to it as The Matrix because when you remote view, at least the manner in which I was taught, is that there is a set of coordinates that get brought forward from the remote viewer and the person that the transcriber that's working with working with you writes down everything that the remote viewer sees, right? Because the remote viewer is just verbally describing everything that happens. And there's a connection between the two in order for the in order for the remote viewing to happen. And it's just um, really an amazing experience. And that matrix concept is like pinpoints. They're like grid energetic grid lines that surround the earth that the remote viewer is able to tap into follow wherever they want to go and then beam down to wherever there it is that they're looking for whatever it is that they're wanting to to to, to view um really fascinating i haven't done it in, in several years but um it is quite the experience if you ever get the opportunity to uh to be a part of it how did people get tested for this how did they get drafted or found out <laughs> that they had these abilities or latent abilities that were they to come in and this government department and this project that they would be honed, they would be nurtured, so they'd be very good remote viewers. Yeah, that's a good question. I I, I really don't understand how the, the government brought that together. 
Um, but uh, Bill Ray and his team, I know they were they were chosen and selected to participate. And I don't know if it was somebody else was identified as a project lead and then they started searching for people that were interested in honing these abilities or if it was uh, people that had these abilities that came forward and volunteered. I, I'm not too sure how it happened, but um, the fact that it did is for me valid, it, this additional validation that there's a much bigger game that we are playing as humans that that most people are, are seeking and wanting to know uh, and understand. And I, you know, I'm just happy that I could still play with it within the superpower realm. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. Remote viewing has oftentimes a bad rap, right? So for people who don't know, it's really this practice. Um, and maybe we all have the skill, but certain people clearly have a lot of talent that they can seek impressions, if you will, about some kind of distant or unseen target uh, by sensing in the mind. You know, I've had it where I've worked with somebody who's actually like described my home or what's a view from a window and it's crazy. Like there's no way they could know these things and more uh, people, situations and so forth. And what's interesting is that historically remote viewing has been criticized. And it said there's really a lack of proper controls. There's a lack of repeatability. So how is this possible? And they've questioned the validity and the accuracy of remote viewing. But I hear you saying from your experience, Justin, that that's not your experience, that you saw up close and personal, that there was something else going on, that there was documented evidence that was coming out and it was verified. It was valid. It was helpful. Was there yeah, anything? Was, yeah. yeah that, that, that if that, that's you're absolutely right. The, the problem, the problem with remote viewing is that unless you're in a highly controlled situation, you can't take away the human factor, right? Because in our highest, I believe that when we are tapped into our full potential, that what we experience on a daily basis is just a fraction of what the power of our minds are. And there are so many factors that go into understanding things like remote viewing in order for it to be effective. You, you have to do a level of personal development that removes all any, any fear-based issues, any ego issues, any what ifs, right? All those stories, because if you're, if any of that exists within you, you're, you're not going to be able to tap in. And if you do tap in, it's all going to be biased by all of those inner stories right? It's all going to be, you can't take away the human mind and all of its fallibilities and all of its stories and all of its programming out of the, out of consideration with something like remote viewing. And so part of the reason why it does get a bad rap is because a lot of people that are, that are doing remote viewing are impacted by their own personal biases, experiences, and so forth, because the mind will create what it believes. And if you carry any type of belief into a remote viewing situation, then that belief is going to be what the mind seeks and will be biased by the remote viewing. The military was able to isolate things because that's what they do. They come in and break everything down. And it's very structured, which is why I imagine they had so much success with it over time. I would imagine part of the reason why that it got... Um, you know why the why it came to an end was probably because it was difficult to duplicate because of all the reasons I just said. How do you how do you manage that in a volunteer army and where you you got to go and and deprogram the personal development stuff in every single soldier and then bring them into the remote viewing space because otherwise the the results won't be accurate. So I would imagine that's part of the reason why they shut it down. I don't know for certain, but if I were to guess. That's what I would say. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting hearing you say that because it strikes me that the same must be true if you're seeking out a psychic or someone who does a healing or Akashic records or past life. Same. You want a clean facilitator. You want somebody who's coming at you and what you're seeking to be a really clean venue so that what you're receiving is not tainted by whatever is going on or has gone on in their space. Yep, yep. No, that's in, 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 we see that a lot in the personal development space um, because a lot of people are, they have gifts, but then the gifts are tainted by they need to make money. 
right? They've they're got wounded. their own they're wounded. They've got their own survivability. They're on a mission. They're social justice warrior, whatever it is that all impacts whatever information is coming through. And so you have to understand the filter of the person that is delivering the information and, and choose wisely from who you seek advice from, who you get guidance from, where you get that information from, because it's all there. It's all real. But unless you understand, like you said, the vessel that's bringing forth that information and the work that they've, they've done in the world, the work that they've done for themselves, then do you really want to be taking that kind of input and making it yours? You know, and, and here's a beautiful thing. You're going to know, you're going to know there it's, it's a, it's a, it's a modality we teach called congruency because when you tap into a person, when you connect with somebody in a space, especially a space of trust, the information that's being brought forward, you'll know if it resonates or if it doesn't resonate. And Here's an indicator. If it always ends with the buy, if it run run to the back of the room and buy my stuff, that's usually an indicator of that person's filters of what, what what's being brought forth. Because the information that is being brought forward, if it's pure and true, one, it's going to resonate with you, and, and two, there won't be any questions. There will be nothing. There's no attachment to it from the other person because the information is just the information. Yeah. Yeah. I just know of an example of something like this where somebody, you know, very nice person, spiritually very open was seeking and went to somebody who during a reading said all sorts of things very emotionally about a past life they had together. And it, it definitely altered the trajectory and brought a lot of stuff into this person's life. Um, and so many people have said to me, a real healer never does that, would never impact somebody by saying, oh, we had this past life and this happened so much so that it really um, messed and to some extent still messes with this person about, well, what was that? What were we? What, you know, what's between us now? And we're in relationships and, you know, it, it was madness, really. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's why, that's why it's your It's why that our focus is self-dominion because our belief is that everybody has the ability to tap into their own knowingness and they don't need to go to somebody else, a psychic or whatnot to, to get answers for themselves. That's where you are on your journey and that's what you're exploring and that's what's helping you get into that space. Great. But ultimately at the end of the day, the only person that's responsible for your experiences in this life is you. And the best thing that we can do for folks as they continue to have their awakenings and really realizing that what they're seeing in the projection is nothing more than that of their inner workings. The best thing that we can do is train people in their own spiritual awareness, understand their own abilities, understand their own superpowers, heal, the, help them heal the wounds for themselves because nobody's going to heal it for you. You have to do that work yourself to build up a solid foundation so you can start to hear the divine, so you can start to tap into that universal energy and potential that we all hold. And at the end of the day, that rests on one person, and that's, that's you. That's the individual. The, the only way that you can get there is you have to do the work. I concur, 100%. Yep. Amen, brother. <laughs> So I know that you honed these skills that you had, investigative skills from the military sector, and you deliver them to the boardroom. You work with people who are entrepreneurs, who have businesses. Um, what do we need to know? Like the world is changing so much, even as we speak. Right now, Justin, what do we need to know that we may not know in order to protect ourselves? <laughs> The biggest thing is that recognize there is always a motive. And in every transaction, every experience, every conversation that you have, you are either being manipulated or you are manipulating it. And that is not a bad thing. That is not a good thing. It just is. Mm -hmm. And every conversation, even in the play between you and I here in this conversation, there's a form of manipulation happening. But we both agreed to it because it's it's an interview, right? You're asking questions, I'm responding, and so forth. And we're playing off of that. And so it's a shared manipulation, right? But I could sit here and just go, Matt, Matt, it'd be kind of a boring interview, right? And you wouldn't want to have me back. Well, take that and expand it out into the business world and recognize that 
everybody you engage with in the business world that wants to sell you something. Here's a program. Here's a program. Here's a program. Here's a program, right? That's a manipulation. Because if you're sitting solid in who you are and what you know to be true about who you are and the work that you're supposed to do in this world and the impact you're here to make, you don't need anything else. You'll find what you need along the way. And so for business owners, entrepreneurs, the ones that are here to make an impact, the ones that know that it's not just about making a buck, pay attention to that. Because if you can focus on your purpose and your mission and provide, get yourself the tools that you need and surround yourself with the proper people to support you along your way in your journey, then you'll know when it's time to, okay, now I need this in my business. Okay, now I need this in my business, right? And don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into the hype. That 4.4 million downloads that we get on the Superpower Network, that's all organic. We got kicked off Facebook two years ago. We got censored two years ago from Facebook because the content that we were putting out, they just shut us down. No warning, no nothing. We had over 6,000 people following us on that Facebook page and they just shut us down. You don't need the social media marketing because if you're speaking truth, people will find you. And the game is about persistence. If you're following your path, if you're walking the walk and standing in your gap, the money will come. The biggest error that we see people make is they, they get this awakening, they have this aha moment, and they start putting things in, in motion, and then they, they get freaked out because they, they take their eye off of that because, oh, now I, I'm going to pay my bills. Don't burn all the ships. Start taking some steps in that direction, and as you gain momentum and are able to monetize that business, now you can walk away from other things that were paying your bills. But one of the biggest mistakes we see is that people get this aha moment, the awakening, and they're going to go out there and they're going to change the world. And they burn all the ships and they have no means of making money because they haven't actually built anything just yet. And then, of course, the money that they had saved up all got spent on this program and that program and this program and that program. And yet they didn't have anything to sell to begin with. So be where you're at. Have a solid foundation to make sure you know how you're paying your bills and trust that if that's the path and the gap that you're supposed to stand in, that everything that you need. Because the concept of pronoia, not paranoia, hmm. pronoia, pronoia is the concept that the paranoia, first off, paranoia is that is the belief that everything's out to get me. Right? The universe is getting me, the, the, the government's watching me, all, all kind of stuff, right? Pronoia is the belief that the universe is conspiring for you. So why is it happening for you? And trust that. If you're walking your path and you're having the conversation you're supposed to have and you're supposed to be having and you're listening to the spirit and you're following that divine path, the universe will provide exactly what you need when you need it. And if you're listening, you'll know when to take action. You'll know when it's the right time to buy something. You know when it's the right time to take the next course or whatever. But the biggest mistake we see people make is they ping from here, 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 here. And that's part of the reason why we, we created Superpower Experts was to provide the training to keep people from pinging and spending tens and 20 and 30 thousands of dollars, right, on things that they weren't ready for to where they really need to do is identify who they were so they can understand their mission and purpose and move forward with conviction and trust, knowing that it's going to happen for them. Yeah, I really appreciate you breaking down all those mistakes and things to avoid important stuff. And for folks, let's go conversely, because as an expert, you, Justin, see everything. And I know in my field of expertise and everybody's field, you see patterns, right? You see people doing things over and over. And there's a part of you that wants to jump in and say, please, if you'll just stop doing X, Y, and Z, I promise it'll be okay. And also conversely, if you will only do these three or five things, I promise you, I know it will create success. What do you know for people, even people who are further along than just starting, um, who are quite in their business, what do you know that absolutely create success and you wish so much you could stand on a mountain and wave get people's attention to pay attention to what you're going to say the number one piece of advice i have for those folks is, is to remind them that it's okay to say no 
it, it's okay to say no. You don't have to have every single client. You can't help every single person. It's not about numbers. It's about quality. And it, it takes one domino, right, to, to knock over the next and to knock over the next. And it, it's okay to, to not take on every single client. It's okay to say no to people that you know aren't ready for whatever the service is that you're providing. It's okay to stay in that space. And it's more important for your success to stay in integrity with that, knowing that and trusting that you're going to continue doing the walk. You're going to continue doing what you do and let that person circle back around to you when it's time. But to take somebody's money prematurely creates more work for you, creates a bigger headache for you and impacts your self-confidence, even at a cellular level, even if you can do the whole, yeah, they weren't ready. Well, they weren't ready, but yet you still sold to them. So that 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 would be one of my biggest pieces of advice is it's, it's okay to say no, that know that there's there's more customers in your world, know that there's more clients in your, in your world and, and trust in that, stay true and never sell yourself short for who you're in service to. That's really important. It really is important. And I having... I think I've been doing business for 11 years, what I do around the visibility and the books and the, the interviews. And then I also do the same out in the world. And I absolutely learned the hard way that I don't remember now who it was, but it was some time ago where a client, potential client was presented. I got an energy read. This is like a hard person, impossible to please. They even needed something done quicker then it was clear the process was. I agreed to the quicker to do it on their behalf and brought them on board, uh, yay money. And let me tell you, they were horrible to work with. <laughs> the most complaining, critical, like, and it's shocking. And I don't get that from clients ever. I typically attract these just amazing, grateful, spiritual, hungry, open people. So that was a, it's a good lesson. It's a really good lesson to never repeat the moment I suss ever again doesn't happen often, but if I were to, I already know my answer. It would have to be no in vetting them. I can't. That's that's. I love that you said that vetting, right? That's that's where all of this information, the business world came from, because in the corporate counterintelligence business, is that's what we we're helping people do. These business owners do is they were wanting to make these rush decisions, or they're wanting to jump into this project, or they're wanting to get involved with this person, or bring this person on board, and they were making decisions from from an emotional place, right? And so, of course, we'd look into the person, we find this background, we find that background, we would find, um, you know, this fraud, this scam, all this kind of information, and we would have clients that would repeat, and they we were happy to take their money. In a system, and because every time we provided information for them, that like, oh, so much, you know, you saved me ten thousand dollars because had I gotten involved, this would have, you know, this would have uh, cost my business, you know, this much time, this much money, you know. Thank you for that. Um, we realized that while we were happy to do that, um, we recognized that it was it was more effective to actually train those people in their own knowingness, their own discernment, because intrinsically and intuitively, they were coming to us just to validate what they already knew to be true. They just wanted to see it proven in, in proof in, in the physical, right? They wanted to see the, the background check. They wanted to get the validation from the vetting that said, yes, this is not the right choice to make. When we started training people to trust their own intuition, if they're already asking those questions, it's typically going to be a no. If, you're, if that's coming up for you, then then stop and listen and and understand that, that you can tap into that information and, and make that decision for yourself. But oftentimes the opportunity looks big or the opportunity looks huge and it's a lot of money or a lot of whatever. And people make a decision and get involved with something or someone that they, they shouldn't get involved with when intrinsically they know. And we've all been there. I've been there myself of just like, Yep, there it was. I knew there was something off, right? And then it for of course it manifests and things don't go out the way it's supposed to. It's a hard it's a hard lesson to learn in business, but as a business owner, 
trust that intuition. It's the best thing that you can do. If you know something just doesn't feel right, if there's not congruency and somebody's telling you that they're this, but everything you're seeing is, is not that, or you're talking to them, you know, that I can get you a million dollars a year and they're driving, you know, uh, 1972 beat up Volkswagen bug. That That's, that's, there's some things that are not congruent there, right? Um, pay attention to those things, they're indicators. And you have to be willing to look beyond what the words are, what the offers are. You have to be able to tap into the energy and what the person and how they actually show up in the projection and who they are in the world to make a decision for yourself. Same is also true. I find the know or the learning how to vet if you're hiring somebody for your business, whether they're going to be an assistant, whether they're going to create a website, whether you need a coach. It's so important to know where your money's going and that it's, it's going to be a really good flow situation and that they will actually produce what they say they will. So any vetting tips that you can offer us that we can take out in the world? Yeah, one of the best things that you can do if you're getting involved with somebody is ask them, how, how can I do my due diligence on you? And if they come back and, and want, want to know what that means, well, what do you mean by that? You say, well, how do I validate? How do I verify what you do? How do I verify and validate you know, what you say you can do? Are, is there, are there people that I can talk to? And then actually call the people that they give you as references. And then trust that the reference that they're going to give you, of course, is going to be their best performing client, right? And, but then ask that reference for a reference. Who else might you know that has worked with, with somebody? One of the best questions you could ask somebody that you talk to about um, somebody that you're looking to get involved with and say, let's say, say Bob is offering a service and Bob gives you a reference. One of the best questions you can ask that reference is, you know, is there any reason somebody might say or tell me that I shouldn't work with Bob? Ask the reference for why somebody might tell you you shouldn't work with this person, right? Because intrinsically, us as humans, we want to be helpful. And asking a question in that manner gives the person you're talking to an out. It says, well, I might not say this, but, you know, John worked with Bob and John didn't really have a great experience with him uh, because X, Y, Z, right? Um, and those are just bits of information that will allow you to gather information on whoever it is that you're looking to get forward with. And then of course, go Google, <laughs> Google the person's name, Google the business name, along with the words fraud, along with the word scam, along with the word um, uh, lawsuit, right? Um, search for the person, search for the business name with that search for reviews, those kinds of things. And, and recognize that Somewhere in the middle of all that information, right, where all the lines cross is the truth. Oh. Because you can't take away, you know, just because somebody has a bad review somewhere doesn't mean that the person is bad altogether, right? If they've got 100, view, 100 reviews and they've got 50 bad reviews, eh, okay, that's probably an indicator. You know, but if they got thousands of reviews and they've only got a handful of bad reviews, then, eh, okay, that's probably more of a personality conflict, a communication issue, whatever, and, and the wholeness of the information that you're gathering when you're looking into somebody, again, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And you have to be able to discern that for yourself as far as risk mitigation is concerned. Mm. Never knew that before. So Google somebody with the words comma fraud or comma scam or comma review or comma lawsuit. Yep. And Don't put the comma in. Don't put the comma in. Just put the person's name or the business name and just so so you you type in, you know, XYZ company scam, XYZ company fraud, XYZ company lawsuit, XYZ company, and just put Google, Google that and watch what happens. And yeah. you, you'll get a lot a lot of information. Okay. Technically, why because I never knew this. Why not a comma? What does the comma do? The comma separates it out. And so you're gonna because that's gonna put the two keywords back to back. So just put the just put the put the word the key phrase in X Y Z business fraud X Y Z business scam, and see what information pops up and be willing to go beyond the first page. Mm. You, you have to click through six or seven pages on Google results to see it because there are services out there that get paid by people that are scammers and fraudsters to push the Google results down to the eighth or ninth or tenth page. 
Um, it's it's a reputation management service that that is provided by a lot of places and, and recognize that people do that, especially if they have a lot of bad reviews um, and they're still in business. You have to be willing to go beyond the first page of Google in order to look for results. Okay, this is huge information. Thank you. And what about right now and predictions going forward, Justin? Do you have any predictions for those of us in business or personal affairs because of what you do and see that are going to be happening? We should be prepared for. Yeah, the the businesses that are going to succeed and, and survive this wave of change that we are going through in society are the ones who recognize that we don't have to play big corporate America's game anymore. And that what's most important and what we are getting back to is community-based businesses, community-based leadership. And the beautiful thing is, well, people people hear community-based relationship, community-based business, and they think, well, okay, well, my business, I want it to be bigger than just the city I'm in. It's a worldwide community, folks. The world is now the community and the businesses that are trying to gain control over that, that are with all the things that we're seeing in, in, in corporate America from the censorship on social media to just the, the crap they put out on the news, that, that it's all feeding somebody else's agenda and that you are either a consumer or a creator in it. And if you believe anything that's being put out by mass media, remember, you're either being manipulated or you're manipulating the situation, anything that you consume means you are being manipulated by whatever it is you are consuming to include whatever your friends are posting, whatever your friends say, whatever your friends' opinions are on social media. If you are a creator in your world and you want to experience true freedom, you have to stop consuming and you have to start creating. And the businesses that create their, their own constructs, that set their own containers, create their own rules, and live and abide by them are going to attract more clients, are going to attract more listeners, are going to attract more attention to themselves than businesses that have fancy logos and Super Bowl commercials. Can you give an example of being a creator? What does a creator put out? A creator puts out what they know to be true. It's not a regurgitation of what they're seeing on social media or what the news says, but it's knowing who you are in your highest, in connection with the divine, and moving forward and putting information out from that place, not from a place of scarcity, not from a place of lack, not from a place of fear, not from a place of because somebody said so, but from a place of self-dominion and I know who I am in this world. I know my purpose. I know my mission. I know who I'm here to support. I know who I serve. Word I am word. Mm. Paul Paul Selig. Yes. Right. He yes. matter of fact, Tony Tony is interviewing him uh right now actually. Uh he's coming he's on beautiful. Coming on show. Oh he's 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 I one was of our his very people. first radio interview ever. Oh fantastic. Yeah, yeah he's friends he's a beautiful person. So yes we're yeah. Exactly. Word, I am word. And it, that's that's what I mean by creator. is mm-hmm. somebody who is able to look reality in its face and deny its existence. Because everything out there, if you want to call it evil, if you want to call it whatever, whatever conspiracy, it doesn't matter. It's all designed to try to manipulate the human psyche into believing something that is not real. And you can see it on the news. You can see it on social media. And you don't have to believe it. You don't have to buy into it. And it's okay for you to go, no, not my reality. And then create from what you know to be true. Create from a place of what you know, you how you can be of service. Put that information out in the world and just brush everything else to the side because it doesn't matter. And you, like I said, you are either create, you either manipulating the reality or you're being manipulated by it. So create your own reality and tune everything else out and invite those in to your reality that want to come play with you in that space. Mm. Well, I know that you are a family man and I want to talk about that because you've said 
that you're a family unit that is a 24 seven family. What does that yeah. mean, Justin? <laughs> um, we are very blessed. We are very, very blessed. When, when Tony and I first left government, um, we had our daughter, Neva. Uh, she was two. Um, I also have a, a 20, soon to be 25 year old and a soon to be 21 year old uh, from my first marriage. And uh, they're all amazing. I, every single, all three of them are absolutely amazing. Um, the older two, of course, are, are grown now and out on their own, but Neva has been with us um, on this journey from day one, because when we left business, when we left uh, corporate America, when we left uh, the government, we made a pact that we would never do anything unless it could include her. And we, we sacrificed that one time and it didn't go well. Um, it didn't go well at all. It was just, it was just a really bad experience all around. Um, you know, it was what it was and it just, we realized that, okay, never again. And so every business conference that we ever attended, every board meeting that we went to, everything, she's been with us the entire time. She's 11 years old. She's had, she's been doing podcasting since she was seven. Um, she was actually our second show on the network. And at 11 years old, she runs three of our sections for the podcast production because it, it does it, it takes a team of people to to produce 20 shows um and so she oversees our image creation our audio production and she is also the coordinator for our internship program where we have six interns and so she she manages people that are because our interns range from 25 to 65 years of age and she's she's their manager she she runs those teams and she's absolutely brilliant in it. And it's because she's been with us since she was two. She, at two years old, she asked for her, her first set of business cards. She wrote a best-selling book at the age of seven. Um, and now she's, uh, she, her, she's retired superpower kids podcast, but in 2020, in 2020, she got over 2 million downloads in, tw in all of 2020 and superpower kids. And now she's part of our, our family podcast show, which we call Reclamation, and we've dubbed ourselves the first inspired family of, of the first family of inspired personal development. And so um, her brilliance in everything that we've taught her, she's very much an old soul, uh, comes through very much uh, on, that, on that show. This is Dare to Dream. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? My future dreams and goals are just creating a reality that allows my children and the next generation to step forward into their own dominion and to be able to carry that forward with them. So they, 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 re they realize and trust that relationship with the divine over anything and everything else that the world is presenting to them. And, you know, it's crazy is that at, at 11, I'm confident that right now if something would happen to Tony and I, that she could go out and live on her own right now because she knows how to make money. She knows to how to be a service and she's confident in who she is in the world. She knows who she is in the world and she's more tapped in and more, more, just more aware than, than most adults because we had the opportunity to start training her from young, from when she was really young, to not put all of the programming that we had as, as kids from our parents. And God bless them, they did the best they could. But I, had, I was 34 years old when I had my awakening. I've been a, a spiritual channel my entire life. My parents told me I was crazy when I was eight years old that I could see ghosts. They apologized 20 years later because they, they started seeing the things in the house that I saw, right? But that's what drove me to my understanding of wanting to unpack all of my garbage and my stories and my wounds and reconnect with, with God in, in that space. And when Neva came along, Tony and I um, made the commitment that we weren't going to put any of those programs onto her. We were not going to let those programs get created in her. And at 11, she has got a very solid foundation and she knows who she is and there's by the time she's an adult, she won't have anything to unpack 
because she knows who she is. She remembers that and she she lives an amazing life and is a beautiful example of what is possible when you commune with the divine. Mm. Your website, superpowerexperts.com. Anything you want to say here at the end to the listeners and viewers? Absolutely. You know, if this conversation intrigues you, uh, you want to learn more about the empathy conversation, the actual superpower conversation, we've got a free webinar. Go to superpowerexperts.com forward slash activate. It'll take you to get instant access to uh, to the information that Tony about fourth ago. She goes over all of the all of the superpowers there. You can dive more into the conversation around empathy and so forth. Um, but yeah, take a look. Go listen to one podcast a day. Keep yourself attuned. Watch what you consume and start tapping in. Go up, not out. Mm. Go up, not out. Thank you so much, Justin, for coming on the show today. It's been great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. I end with this quote, which is, your relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream podcast. Leave us a comment. I love reading what you write, and I do get back to all of you. It's become a thing that I connect. My guest next week is Jim Phillips, and Jim is going to tell us about the importance and meaning of living in full expression, plus the three truths that will actually set you free. If you're listening to this on podcast and you would like to check out myself and my guests and watch us visually and animated, and I highly recommend you do, subscribe to this inspirational YouTube channel. Go to debbiedashinger.com. That's my website. You can go to my website and you can get to YouTube that way. Also, the direct link is YouTube dot com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you, you fearless and wonderful folks out there who follow the show, who listen, who get back to me and give all of us feedback. I'm so glad you're on this journey. May you be safe and well, and may you create all your dreams into your reality.